Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the using dynamic applications in unified policies learning by. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right to the example. Uh, we have a user and then we have the VSRX device and then we have the internet. And so basically we're going to be using dynamic policies in dynamic applications in unified policies to protect the user against certain things. And those certain things are on the slide. We have some criteria. And we'll first we want to discover an application signature that is being used on Reddit for advertisements. And then we want to use a dynamic application to block those advertisements on Reddit. So let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and check this out. All right, here is the VSRX1 CLI. And the first thing we want to do is we want to start configuring some policies. We need to actually set something up to see what actually what the applications that are being used to be able to then block those applications. So let's go ahead and jump into configuration. Jump into the a policy that will be from the user zone to the internet zone. going to configure a catch-all policy. Now with dynamic applications, we want to set the application to the Junos defaults. That works well with dynamic applications. Then we're setting the dynamic application to any. And then we need to set up some then criteria. We're going to say permit and then we're also going to configure the policy to use some application services, an SSL proxy profile. This was configured er earlier, named Learning Byte. And so this is so we can decrypt HTTPS traffic. And so that's what we want to do there. We'll commit that. So now that that is committed, let's go ahead and jump to the user device and go to Reddit and see what we can find. All right, so here is the user device. Going to go to Reddit. And you can see here on the right that we have some advertisements. And we just want to block advertisements. They're annoying. Uh, you know, there's a potential for malware. You know, I've seen that happen with advertisements. And so we're just going to block those advertisements. So let's go ahead and jump back to the VSRX1 CLI. And let's look at the application system cache to see what applications show up. All right, so here we are in the CLI. Look at the system cache. Now there's gonna be quite a bit in here. It might be kind of hard to figure out what we're looking for, but we can look through here and there's some obvious ones, some ones that I'm aware of. And for example, one that is definitely an ad based application signature is double click. That's something that I've been aware of in the past. That might be something you have to research on your own to find out, but we can see double click appearing a few times here. Then we also see something like advertising-com. So that's, those are different candidates for sure. And we can scroll through the rest of this and it's gonna kind of be a repeat of the stuff that we're seeing. And so keep that in mind. Okay, so we see a few different things like, okay, let's find out some more information about those. Remember when you're referencing an application in the CLI, it's always Junos colon something. Those are the predefined applications that you will download in the application signatures. Now that's something else to keep in mind that I didn't talk about beforehand is you need to make sure that you've downloaded the application signatures and also you have a valid license for application identification. So keep that in mind. So looking at double click, this is pretty telling. The signature detects access to double click. Double click is an internet advertising and tracking service. That sounds kind of like what we need. And so the other one, now if I scroll back up, it was uh, advertise.com or dash com. So we can just do that real quick. Advertising.com, there we go. Look at this one. It says it's a massive premium cross-screen network with several million global unique visitors, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, it doesn't get into too much detail. You know, obviously this has to do something with advertising, but I think if we just stick with a double-click application, I think that's what we might be shooting for here. So let's go ahead and create a new policy. See, we have the catch-all policy, so let's edit a new policy. We'll call this block ads. And we'll set a match criteria source, address any destination, any application, Junos defaults. 
Now, if you set this application any, it'll also work. So keep that in mind. Then we want to set a match to dynamic application of Junos colon double click. And we can hit a question mark here. There's also a double click add view. That might be something we may want to use if we just use double click and it doesn't work for us too well. But let's just use double click. Junos colon double click. And so we have the match criteria set up and we set then, we want to set this to reject. And the reason behind this is because with reject, we can also hit a question mark, we can set the SSL proxy profile. And this can be important because we are talking about potentially encrypted traffic here. So let's set the SSL proxy profile, same one that we used in the other policy. And let's say, let's also set a log session init. We'll take a look at the logs afterwards. And then we'll set account too. It'll be nice to be able to see if things are actually hitting that policy. And so we have the two policies configured. So let's go ahead and commit the configuration. But before we jump to the user, I almost made a rookie mistake there. Notice how the policy, the catch all policy is before the block ads policy. That's kind of a problem. It's never going to hit that block ads policy. So let's go ahead and put the block ads policy before the catch all policy. All right, that looks a lot better. So let's go ahead and commit that, and then jump to the user. All right, so here's the user. I'm going to first clear the cache just to get rid of any stale information. And open Google Chrome again, and let's go to Reddit, see what happens. You can see the advertisements attempting to load in the bottom right-hand side there, but it's not, and if we scroll down, we're going to find the other advertisements aren't loading on the right hand side there. And so that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. So let's go ahead and jump back to the CLI of VSRX1 and have a look. All right, so here is the CLI. Let's first look at the actual policy stats. You can see here that we have had some traffic that hit this policy. Remember that we're only looking at stats for the block ads policy. And so we can see that there's actually some traffic that has come in through there and that means it was rejected. And then let's look at the log messages. Search for the actual policy name. And we can see here that we're getting some session denies happening. And that's exactly what we want to see. Something else I do also want to point out is that it's matching the application as the double click application. So that's perfect. That's what we set it up to do. We're blocking that. That's what we want to happen. So that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed dynamic applications in unified policies. Then we also demonstrated how to configure and verify dynamic applications in unified policies. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.